Today's reading is a difficult story, not one that I'd automatically associate with Advent, which is a word that tends to conjure up feelings like peace, hope, joy. Um, but in fact, Advent is about waiting. It's a season of waiting. And the word hope itself actually does include an element of, of longing, of longing for something yet to come. And I think in that context, Tamar's story does fit in a bit more um, into the story of Advent, Advent, into the season of Advent than maybe first met the eye. Tamar finds herself um, in married to one man and then to his brother next when he dies. And both of them are described in the Bible as being evil and wicked. And in fact, God puts them both to death as a result of that wickedness. Tamar is then deceived by her father-in-law Judah, who withholds from her the opportunity and in that context, probably more the necessity of being able to bear children into that family. So she's caught up in a family of, of lies, of wickedness, and in response to that, Tamar takes matters into her own hands. She does what she feels she has to do. Uh, what she does, does reek of desperation. Um, of, of, of a woman who has nowhere else to turn in a sense. It was a bold and risky move that she took, one that could have backfired easily and in fact almost led to her execution. But in a last minute plot twist, she is vindicated. Her father-in-law Judah admits his failings. Her honours returned, some honours returned to her and she is finally able to bear the children that she'd longed for. So this was a story that really was full of broken relationships, of lies, of a family being torn apart spiritually and physically as a result of sin. And the lies and the wickedness seem to just elicit more deception and more brokenness. Victims and perpetrators were all caught up in a, a web of lies. Now, how does this story bring us hope today? How is this part of a, of a journey home for us? Well, Tamar and her sons are in fact cited in the genealogy in the family tree of Jesus Christ, our saviour. You can see that in Matthew chapter 1. And this is a hopeful reminder for us that out of brokenness, God can work his story of redemp redemption and rescue, not just for the immediate and personal situations we might find ourselves in, like Tamar um, did and um, actually for something much bigger than us and our families. God worked the redemption of the world, in fact, our ability to come to him out of this messy beginning. And without giving too much of a spoiler, I think we'll see that this is a recurring theme in the family tree of Jesus Christ. So as we think about the story of Tamar, maybe we can ask ourselves, in what areas do we long to see that hope of redemption? Is there a particular situation or person that I can bring to God in prayer today? Maybe it's a prayer over a desperate situation that we see ourselves in or others in. Maybe it's a prayer for courage to, to believe again, strength to believe again in God's redeeming power. I hope we'll be encouraged by reading Tamar's story as well as looking at the Christmas story itself that such prayers are not left unanswered.